Hey guys, I uh, got a lot of questions from my Instagram stories on the weekend about the smokers and what's the difference between the two smokers behind me being the bullet smoker and the offset smoker. So I thought I'd just put together a quick video to explain the difference between the two smokers and which one I'd recommend for video. Okay guys, so the first smoker that we'll look at here is the bullet smoker, given its name because of its shape. Um, bullet smokers all work pretty similarly, so depending on which one you have, you might have one or two shells, this one's got two shells in it. Um, the way that it works inside is you put your fire or your hot coals in down the bottom here. Uh, you're around about the middle of the smoke you'll have a water bowl, and then you'll have either one shelf or two shelf on top of that. Uh, the water bowl is what's really used to control the heat, so having water in that bowl protects the meat between the fire uh, and your meat and uh, it also helps to regulate the heat. So with this particular one here, I can fill this water bowl. If I fill it all the way up and add the fuel in the bottom, uh, this will struggle to get over 100 degrees. Whereas if I half fill this one, that tends to be around the sweet spot. I'll set around 110, 115. If I have no water in here at all and no water bowl, this can skyrocket to 300 degrees. So you can see how the water really helps to control the heat. It also helps protect your meat from drying out uh, and getting burnt. So, uh, pretty easy to use. This one here, basically have the vent at the bottom and the top open all the time and really just regulate it with that water bowl. So if I want to get it a bit hot, I'll let the water evaporate out. Um, if I need to cool it down, I'll just add some water, water into that bowl. You can also put other things in that water bowl, like wine, beer, apple juice, depending on what you're cooking, just to give it some flavor as it's smoking through the meat. So um, different qualities in these uh, available. So you can spend as cheap as $60, $50, uh, you know, up to hundreds of dollars. And the dif real difference between them is the gauge of steel that it's used. So this is probably a mid-market one. Um, so it's not too thin, but it's not an overly thick um, smoker. The, uh, the thinner smokers, what will happen is you'll tend to lose a bit more heat in those. So they're not as economical, uh, they're losing heat, and you're using a lot more fuel on the bottom. So um, not a bad option if that's what you can afford, but you'll probably just end up spending more money on the fuel to keep the heat in there. If you spend a little bit more money on a better quality one, you use less fuel, so that's the trade-off. Um, the really good quality ones, obviously, uh, really thick steel, retain the heat really well, which is important because you want to maintain a consistent temperature throughout the smoke. You don't want to be playing around with it all the time. You really want to be able to set it all up. Uh, and leave it to its own devices, not checking it every 10, 20 minutes. So that's the difference between the quality. Uh, Construction-wise, they all look pretty much the same as these ones. So that's a little bit about the Bullet Smoker. Great unit, this one's got two shells. Uh, I've done really long cooks in this, so on the weekend we get a 14 hour pork butt in here. Uh, obviously just need to top up the fuel at different times and check the water. But apart from that, it really is can be a set and forget type device. Coming over here to the offset smoker, uh, different beasts all together. So this one here has a fire box that sits onto the side. So to get this one going, we need to build a fire. So we lay a bed of hot coals uh, or hot rocks down, and then we add timber chunks into there to build our fire. So initially, it uh, burns quite hot, and then you need to regulate that heat and dial it in to get to your desired temperature, which can take a little bit of time. So there's a bit of prep work that goes into these ones. The way you control the heat, regulate the heat, is via vents on the side. Uh, which controls the airflow, which um, obviously controls the heat. So we need to shut that airflow down to try and bring the temperature down, but we don't take it down too far, otherwise you can get too much smoke. So it is a little bit fiddly, and it is a bit trial and error, and the type of timber you use and the type of coals you use will impact the, the, the type of smoke that you get. Um, the airflow through the fire box here, up into the chamber, swells around your meat, and then finally up and out through the flue. So um, a little bit more hands-on with this one, and I'm still getting my, uh, getting the, I'm still getting the hang of this one, um, but obviously a much bigger unit, so I can cook a lot more meat on this one. So if we're having a, uh, a family over and I need to do a few racks uh, or a few different briskets uh, with vegetables and everything else, I can fit all that into this one here. This one also has a lot thicker steel. So this unit here weighs probably close to 200 kilos, very heavy. Um, again though, once that fire is dialed in, we've got the heat right, it will sit at that consistent temperature for a long time. So it is really economical once you get your fire under control and you just need to rotate through some logs every few hours or so. Um, no water dish in this one. So unlike this one here where we have the water bowl to protect our meat from the heat, this one doesn't have one. So it is a little less forgiving. If you walk away from it, the heat starts to climb and you're not keeping an eye on it, you will potentially dry out your meat or worse yet, burn your meat. Uh, so a little less forgiving, which is why it is a bit more hands-on, uh, but still um, a great unit. As I said, really, really uh, traditional style unit. Um, if you enjoy your hands-on style of cooking, which I do, 
this is definitely the way to go if you don't mind playing with the fire, uh, maintaining the fire, checking your meat and the whole process of smoking meat, then this is definitely the go. It is a lot more hands-on. This bullet one here can be a little bit more set and forget. So um, again, quality of these ones, different quality. You spend uh, thousands and thousands on good quality ones or you can spend hundreds on a, on a cheap one. Again, the quality of the material, not only for the, the heat, but the, um, the time that this unit's gonna last. This one's sort of semi-outdoors, I'd call it. This one should last a long, long time. A cheap one will eventually um, uh, fall apart, probably end up rusting on you. So that's the difference between the two units. Uh, my recommendation is if you're just starting out, definitely get yourself a bullet smoker. They're even easier than a Weber. So a lot of people use a Weber to do their smoking, which is fine. Um, I like the fact that the heat here is some distance from the meat and that water dish. You can't beat that water dish. It's really simple. So really to get going on one of these, all you need to do is add your coals, add your water, add your meat, and you really can't go wrong. So happy smoking. Please subscribe good. to my YouTube channel. Yeah, get out. Cut.